All right, guys, no commercial today. Just going right into it. Uh, we're back. It is episode 15 of the coaches, the street parking coaches roundtable. And today we're taking a little bit of a different angle. Uh, when we were discussing what we should talk about this week on the coaches roundtable, I kind of had been thinking about some of our um, most recent episodes and honestly, most of our episodes to date. And I feel like there's been a lot of emphasis for the crowd that's just getting started, starting over. We're talking to people about tips to um, find consistency or, or that sort of thing. And we thought we would take it a different direction and talk to the people who already have that stuff. So maybe you are, all, are already super consistent um, and you have been for a long time. Fitness is kind of your thing. You enjoy it. Uh, and that could also go for your nutrition. We're gonna talk about nutrition a little bit today as well. I think this applies to all of us kind of sitting here in some way or another. And we do have a lot of members who don't struggle with that stuff as much. I think that there is a, um, a little bit of a misconception about street parking outside of our community that it's for people who are struggling with consistency. It's only for people who are just starting out or, or coming back from injury or have some other thing that they're working through. And that if you are a fitness person who maybe has more time or doesn't struggle with that stuff, that street parking's too easy for you or something like that. And so I think today's episode will help uh, eliminate that misconception and give our members and even people who are not street parking members some tools or things to think about for leveling up and whether it's always or maybe you're just in a season maybe this summer you find yourself a, a little bit more motivated or having a little bit more time on your hands or something like that or just wanting an extra challenge when it comes to your fitness or your nutrition some things that you can do and ways that you can go about giving yourself a little bit of an extra push. So um, we'll just dive right into it. I'm personally, I'm not in a super duper like level up stage right now in, in my life, but I have been in the past. Um, I don't think that most of us sitting here are like super concerned about challenging ourselves extra um, with adding in a bunch of extra elements or spending a lot more time. We've all definitely been there. I think, um, and these are in no particular order. We just kind of made a list. And so we'll go through them and, and talk about them. But the first one that I added to our list over here, placed nicely in front of the camera is um, one thing that you can do is you can add in an accessory program or one of the extra programs within street parking. Maybe you add in the 5K program because you haven't been doing a lot of running and that's something that would challenge you. Maybe if you have time, you add in some of the power lifting or something like that before or after a workout if you've just been kind of doing the main workouts. How do you guys, when you guys choose to do stuff like that, how do you guys choose which one, where to add it in and that kind of stuff? So the first thing that I think about, and I think this would be important for everyone to keep in mind, is that if you're going to level up, you don't want to sacrifice intensity in your daily workouts. So if that's going to be a problem, then maybe it's not the right time. That being said, I think taking it very slowly is a good way to go. So for example, if I'm very consistent with the daily workouts and I decide that I want to maybe work on some strength, cause that's usually, I mean, for me, that's like strength is my weakness, mm -hmm. right? So I'll, I'll maybe want to add in some strength training. And, and really I think the best place to start would be like doing the 20 rep um, back squat program. Cause it's one day a week and I, it doesn't take very long I do some warm-up sets, I bang out my 20 reps, and then I can go into my workout. Um, because it's only one day a week, in a perfect world, yeah, maybe I'm doing it every Monday or something, but the daily workouts change, and so I would maybe look at the week ahead and see where a good day might fall where there's not a lot of really crazy squatting in the workout. Um, that day or maybe the day before something like that um, and then i would start there over time i can gradually 
add in more stuff. Yeah, I think for us, um, it's that we know we always have more time on Saturday. So if there is a day where we add in extra stuff in our current life schedule, it tends to be on Saturday. I know when I was doing the 20 rep squat program, I would typically do it on Saturday. I've been doing some other um, lifting and stuff on Saturdays here and there. Uh, so it might be that you look at the workouts. It might be that you look at the schedule. Um, I like that uh, Jeb is talking about, you know, if leveling up is the goal, um, choosing something that might be a weakness for you instead of just choosing another thing that you're already good at. Uh, not that that's wrong. If you're adding something extra in, go for it and choose what you like. But if you're truly trying to challenge yourself and that's the goal with it, definitely choose something that you're less comfortable with. I personally love um, some of the things that I've been introduced to since we've had street parking that I didn't really do much or at all before SP um, doing in some of the sandbag workouts. So obviously, you know, when I was doing CrossFit, we did stuff with the worm and things like that, but there wasn't ever like sandbag specific type training. And so that was new for me, which is a challenge. Anytime you do new movements or use new equipment, that's going to be a challenge for you. Um, I love the dumbbell strength program. It's this like slow moving, you know, three seconds down, three seconds up type thing, um, which is hard, but hard in a different way than what I'm used to, which is like squatting with a barbell and, and more power and speed. So choose something that's a little less comfortable or something that you don't have a lot of experience with. That's how I personally like to choose if I'm gonna add something else in. Yeah, and I think for this one in particular, because we're going to talk a little bit about how to level up, even if you don't have a ton of extra time. Um, but when you're adding in <clears throat> accessories and extra programs, a given is that you need more time to do those things if you're also going to keep the daily workout. So um, I am blessed to have a, a schedule that allows for me to have some time in the morning and then also some time in the afternoon to train or to work out. So I often will add in an extra program or an accessory. Like for instance, yesterday I did the first uh, body weight strength session um, yesterday morning and then um, did Molly's birthday workout in the afternoon, which was excellent. So yeah, I think, and for me, kind of having like a two a day or spacing out those sessions allows for me, like Jeb said, to make sure that my daily workout, I'm still bringing intensity to that so that I have, you know, having some rest between those two helps. So that's how I choose to incorporate them. Yeah. And the last thing that I'll say about this one before we move on is I do really like the extra programs. Um, and what I mean by the extra programs outside of the regular accessories are the series. So you've got like the Oli Imams or you've got like the 5K or the dumbbell strength or the body weight strength because um, I think part of leveling up is potentially with those committing to doing all of them as opposed to kind of randomly picking and choosing a SOGO here and a butts and guts there, but like, no, for the next 12 weeks, I'm gonna do one of these per week or for the next six weeks, I'm gonna do two per week and committing to that um is a great way to challenge yourself because sometimes you might not feel like doing it and the main workout looks more fun or something like that um but committing to that i think is a great way to challenge yourself to level up um i kind of hinted at this and it goes along with what alex was saying is not everybody has the option of adding something in because their time is uh limited and that's not the only way that you can challenge yourself is by adding in more. As a matter of fact, I, we should eliminate the idea that adding in more is necessary at all to see better results or to level up. Um, one of the ways, and I kind of mentioned it, like I said, with the sandbag is to try a new piece of equipment. So if you've been working out with dumbbells for only for a year, and you can splurge and get yourself a barbell or get yourself a sandbag is going to be a little bit more financially um, doable for most people, then go for that or buy a pull-up bar, even if it's a, a doorway pull-up bar, if you've been doing, you know, like TRX type rows the whole time or get your hands on a bike or maybe your buddy has a bike and you go over to his house or her house once a week even and use that thing. Um, trying and challenging yourself with new pieces of equipment. I know you've been using kettlebells a lot lately, like you did yesterday. Yeah, I, if you look at the equipment, I definitely um, would put barbell last, um, even though I enjoy working out with a barbell, but I like challenging myself with the 
uh, kettlebells often just because it's not something that um, we plug and play every single day. And I know that I'm going to get a really good workout with it. It doesn't take much time. Um, and it's just another odd object to, you know, plug into the movements. And again, it's just, well, you know, it just feels like you're getting a completely different workout and you have to, your body has to adjust to, you know, how you're going to maneuver this different piece of equipment. So I like to place myself in many positions where um, I don't like to get comfortable with what, just one piece of equipment. So all these things, again, take up less real estate when it comes to sandbag, dumbbells, and kettlebells, where the barbell barbell takes up so much real estate in the garage gym, right? Um, I, yeah, I think I am a huge... Uh, I just encourage you guys to, you know, get some kettlebells to your uh, equipment and that way you guys change it up and just have fun with it, you know, and that way you can start mastering a different piece of equipment and realize you're going to get such an amazing workout with that. If, so if it's one thing Project April shows you, you know, we went a whole month with just dumbbells and it flew by and I just felt such, I felt my shoulders, I felt my traps, my grip, um, just really getting developed and just uh, getting stronger just within a month. Uh, and it feels great. So I'd be curious to see what the, um, uh, how, you know, just a month full of kettlebells would feel like actually, and just to kind of keep things, you know, the journey of fitness is a long one once you've adopted it. So finding ways to just kind of get out of your comfort zone, um, mixing it up is just going to constantly keep you engaged because you, then you can take a break and take a moment to pull back and be like, I'm not, you know, I'm going to tone back a little bit, but then revisit it later and seeing how, you know, if you've maintained deficiency, if it's something that you're still comfortable with moving, uh, you know, in, in the workout. So, you know, one of the questions that we get a lot um, and the one of the reasons that we provide so much information with each workout is to allow you guys to do this with whatever equipment you want to throw in. And we, we're trying to educate you guys on how to do this. So, I mean, I've seen questions from like, how do I Let's take yesterday's workout that had running in it, for example. How do I do this with a swim? How do I do this with a ski erg if I have a ski erg? How do I do this on this bike versus that bike or this uh, piece of equipment versus that? Jeb, how can people, without us listing every single option for them, how can they, if they've got those types of equipment, add them in uh, if they want to challenge themselves that way? Well, the first thing that you would have to do is probably read the coach's notes. That's a challenge in itself, Jeb. I know, I know. But generally, almost always, in the coach's notes, we will explain how long a movement should take, how long each round should take. We'll give you some indication of how to break up the reps and how to pace the workout and that kind of thing. So from there, for example, if it's a 400 meter run and you wanna do a swim, it will say in the workout notes um, that the run should take roughly two minutes. So then you would swim for two minutes. Um, I don't know that we have a exact distance conversion. And I think when it comes to swimming, there's quite a variance in that. So I would just look at the amount of time that that thing should take. And then whatever you customize with in terms of different movement, different equipment, it should take roughly that amount of time. Or if it's you know, you're lifting with a different piece of equipment. Maybe it's some um, following a similar rep scheme, how you're breaking up the reps, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, you guys go for it. Do squats holding a heavy D ball. Do deadlifts with two of those farmer carry handle thingies. That is definitely not the <laughs> real name for those. What are those called? The axle bar things? You know what I'm talking about. You do, use an axle bar if you've got one and, and change the load that's appropriate for the grip being more difficult. There's no wrong way to do it. You see it's a pull from the ground. There are so many, maybe we list it as a deadlift, but there are so many options for equipment and add a tire flip into there. If you, if you see double unders, I know Julian and Salvi quite often will use a heavier rope and lower the reps a little bit. Um, and use the heavier rope if you've got access to that stuff. All of it's super fun, and it's part of this idea that we promote of like fitness freedom. Take the basic idea of the workout and the framework and challenge yourself with new equipment. That's a really fun way to add in some extra leveling up, I guess. Yeah, because leveling up isn't always about going heavier. No. I think that's something that we want to be very clear on and what she just said about the axle bar or the uh, heavy ropes that me and Salvi will use sometimes, you know, 
we're in a position now where, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go heavier in some of my workouts. I just want to maintain the level of intensity and I got to find ways to stick within a goal time. And, you know, so sometimes using a heavier rope is going to, um, slow me down just a little bit. Right. So I'm not, you know, if there's a goal time given, I'm not always trying to, you know, achieve that goal time by just going heavier. It's like, okay, you know, getting different pieces of equipment. So kettlebells might slow me down, a heavier jump rope, an axle bar, different things that my body's not used to that I'm going to have to adjust to. Um, and it just keeps me on course and just consistent, right? So I don't risk injuring myself if I'm not feeling like going heavier. Um, it's just more skills to develop. Yeah, and a lot of that stuff, it's it might not be so much the way that people think oh well to show improvement in my fitness i either need to have gone faster or gone heavier like those are the only two options but it's not at all a lot of those things they're fun and also the mental it like using a heavier rope is mentally more challenging for salvi and julian who are so comfortable with a regular rope that it's not necessarily an easier or harder workout it's just different and so your mind has to you're not doing as many in a row or you're pushing yourself in a little bit of a different way. And I think equipment is great for that. Another thing that you can do, again, if you don't have a lot of extra time, but you're trying to challenge yourself and you're in a mental headspace where you're like, you know, I want to push a little bit harder is to set mini, and I would say almost potentially unattainable goals. Not for me personally, I think it works better if it's not for the whole workout at like a total time that you're trying to beat that's fine, but I like mini goals within the workout. So today's workout, for example, it's Molly's birthday workout. It's got five rounds of 30 wall balls and 30 box jumps and 30 push press. You might choose one of those movements and think, I'm gonna do all 30 wall balls unbroken every single time and force myself to do that, as opposed to breaking it up the way that I'm comfortable with which might actually make your time faster. It probably will because you're pacing a little bit more, but giving yourself little mini goals within the workout that push you outside of your comfort zone and eventually should push you to a faster time because you're building up stamina, you're building up again some mental toughness with that. Do you guys ever do that? Maybe, well, do you ever do it now? I don't do it often in, the, in my current one-year-old mom state but I definitely do sometimes. Do you guys do that? How often do you do that? And what kind of little goals do you set for yourself? Yeah, that's pretty much because, <clears throat> and I've talked about it before, but I'm really good at gaming workouts and pacing myself. Um, so really the only mini goal I'll ever set for myself is to try to do a movement unbroken. Um, if I find it's realistic, although, I mean, most of the time it is, um yeah i don't know that i ever do anything up apart from that and then sometimes i'll mix and match equipment so we haven't touched on that and i don't know that we will anymore but um sometimes i'll pick one movement and go heavier for that particular movement like let's say there's a few weighted movements in the workout i'll just pick one to go heavier for um so yeah that's that's pretty much how i choose to level up or like make mini goals within a workout do you do that often, Jeb? Yes, I almost almost always I'm setting some kind of little mini goal within the round or within a movement. And it's not always to go unbroken, but sometimes it's how I would break it up. So I know like we did that terrible workout with that Alex made with um, the power cleans and the air squats, mm. right? And it was 25 power cleans and I broke it up what did I do? Like, uh, 10, eight, seven the whole way. And so I committed, like, I'm definitely going to do 10 power cleans every time in that first set. And man, but like I get to rep number seven and I just wanted to drop that thing. Um, and so that last three reps was a huge fight and I knew like, okay, that's my goal. I'm going to, if I can get through these, then I'm not only going to achieve my goal, but it's going to build up a little confidence and so those next couple of sets i can knock those out and uh whatever else happens i just won't look at miranda when i'm doing my air <laughs> squats and uh and it'll be cool so i really really enjoy setting those little mini goals for myself in the workouts because honestly it keeps things really interesting and um and i get to almost 
change each workout as I see fit so I can look at it, come up with something that's going to make it even more exciting than it already is. And it's fun. And I would say when you start to do this, um, now typically we want to keep you guys getting the workouts finished in the goal range and things like that. But if you've chosen like, I'm going to do this workout with 30 pound dumbbells and I'm going to, you know, and you start and you're like, oh man, I, I'm, I usually use the 25s and this is making me much slower than I had anticipated. I would say if you're in this mindset and you're already going and you're still moving safely, get through it. Finish with the 30s, even if it takes you outside of the goal range, that's totally fine. Make note of it, but allow yourself to finish it and, and gain the, I guess, mental strength again of knowing that you were able to finish and learning what you can from that. Because at some point you guys kind of kind of break the seal. Now, if you're noticing that you're committed to using the 30s and every single day you're outside of the goal range, then maybe um, play around with it a little bit. Maybe you decide if it's a five round workout that you're gonna only do the first two rounds with the 30s or something like that. So you can kind of, but if you're in it and you've committed and you decided your goal was to finish this workout with a certain weight or, doing a certain number of reps unbroken or something like that, just, just go for it. The other thing that I'll say is um, that you can do within the goals is oftentimes we have members that are faster than the goal range. And my fear is that I, I like the example workout that Jeb gave uh, with the power cleans and the air squats. I mean, I came out like a, like a peacock on fire in that workout. And I got whatever I got on the first round and it was much faster than our goal range that we had set. I could have very easily been like, I don't need to hurt myself that bad for the next three rounds. Like I was way under the goal. I can slow down and still hit the goal. Don't do that. Like try to hold it. Once you've established what you're capable of, you gotta try and hold it and that's really tough. So allow that first round to set that mini goal for you almost in a workout like that one. Um. Something that we provide for you guys, if you're a street parking member, are the extra challenges. So if you've never done an extra challenge, and I really love how we do it in SP because like Julian was saying, it's not always heavier. Sometimes it's, oh, like yesterday, instead of going every seven, every seven minutes, you're going to go every six minutes. So you're essentially getting a whole minute less of rest each time. Um, so you might choose to do something like that. Sometimes instead of a 400 meter run, it's a 600 meter run. Sometimes it's more reps. Uh, and then of course, sometimes it is heavier. So use those. Um, I do extra challenge sometimes and, and not always. I know when it's appropriate for me or not. So once again, don't feel like once you're in the extra challenge group that you have to be in the extra challenge group for everything. Um, don't feel like if the extra challenge is both more reps and more weight that you have to go with both of those options maybe you use the lighter weight and you add the reps or maybe you go with the heavier weight and do the regular programmed reps um play around with that there's fitness freedom within that as well uh i mean you're you're you'll add extra challenge to the extra challenge sometimes yeah i, I mean we definitely know our abilities, right? And it's one of those things where if you're an individual has, who has been doing this for a long, long time, don't be so dependent on us to help you come up with a way to make the workout more challenging. If you have the experience, and most likely if you're asking that question, you should have the knowledge or and the experience needed to make your own customizations and how to challenge yourself a little bit more in workouts. Oftentimes we have to answer to members that are asking why don't we do rope climbs why don't we do ring muscle ups why don't we do more of this listen if you're an individual that's asking those things i think you should kind of put yourself in a position where you just plug it in and know which movements have the same range of motion and just swap and you know you'll know right away after one or two rounds you know if you're paying attention to the goal times if the adjustment that you made or the customization that you made is making sense. So you also have to be okay with making adjustments on the fly in certain workouts as well if you decided to customize it to your ability, right? Um, me and Salvi, Miranda, a lot of us here on the staff know what it takes. So if I wanna work on bring muscle ups randomly in a workout that has pull ups, well, I'll know how to decrease the uh, amount of reps so that way it makes sense to do ring muscle ups right because i know it's still a pulling motion um if it has strict press in a workout and i want to 
do handstand push-ups because I just want to change it up and I don't feel like pulling out a barbell. Well, I know how many handstand push-ups I need to do to make up for the strict presses. So again, and we've learned this through making the mistakes and adjusting and being okay with adjusting because there is no perfect answer at the beginning and you'll know um, the longer you have experience with workouts, how to make those adjustments. And then you just keep, you know, um, your knowledge just keeps increasing and you're able to just move quickly. And these decisions happen so quickly just by work looking at a workout. It's not a, how do I plan this out? You'll look at a workout and it takes literally seconds because you've done it so much now. So make the mistakes, learn from them and just take mental notes and then just keep moving and then let it go. Move on to the next one. Yeah, so he kind of um, alluded to one of the other things that we have listed here, which is the glory days version of the workout, which doesn't show up that often. I would say like maybe two times a month we'll have a glory days option where there will be um, muscle ups programmed or a burpee muscle up or handstand push ups. Very uh, rarely there'll be like a handstand walk or something like that. And we'll throw it in. We call it glory days because it's an opportunity for our members who have done that stuff in the past to like be like, no, I still got it. I can do it. Like, let me prove that I've still got muscle ups in me. And it's kind of fun. Um, and but you can do that as often as you want. Now, I would I would urge you to ask why you're changing it. Um, if it's to make your Instagram post look cooler, I mean, go for it. Awesome. Fine. Um, but if you've noticed that you're constantly changing pull ups to muscle ups, if every time a strict press is programmed in um, a workout, you choose to do handstand push ups. And then when you sit down with yourself at night, you realize it's because you're actually better at handstand push-ups than you are at a strict press with a barbell or dumbbells. Like, make sure you're asking yourself why you're doing that. Do you think that muscle-ups, because they're flashier and they're in um, fancier programs, are somehow better for your fitness? Because that's not true. So make sure that, you are, that you're asking yourself those questions. But 100% fitness freedom. If you've got a cool rope climb set up at your house, in your backyard, or in your barn, or something like that, I mean, we would definitely add in rope climbs if we had that, because uh, it's it's super fun. Um, or handstand walks, or whatever it might be. It's just another variation of using different equipment, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like Julian was saying, if it's a, if it's 15 pull-ups, and you're like, all right, 15 pull-ups, I, I would do in one or two sets. It would take me maybe 20 seconds, how many muscle-ups can I do in that period of time? For some people, the answer is two. For some people, the answer is five. Uh, pick what's appropriate for you. If it's one, now the workout's a little bit of a different workout. So make sure that you have the uh, skill set in that that's enough that you can get a similar stimulus. Um, but at the end of the day, you're in there, you're working out, you're having a good time. There's no like wrong way to go about those and keep your eyes peeled for those glory days options. And if you watch the lives on Instagram, you'll see that, uh, once again, it's usually Julian and Salvi that make those choices. Very rarely will I attempt to do something like that because I just don't care. But And again, the purpose of SP or the messaging that we're trying to push here is glory days is fun. But when you're working out, work out with, your, work out with purpose, right? Um, so don't plug in a, a skillful movement that you haven't learned to be efficient in because now you're taking away from what the workout's uh, intention is supposed to be. I would encourage you to, if you want to work on Glory Day's movements and you're not efficient in them yet, well, maybe save it for afterwards and do like an EMOM and treat it as a skill-based session, five to 10 minutes on the clock, just like we do with a lot of our Oli EMOMs. You know, at the end of a, something, you know, if you want to have the extra time, you want to cash out, put five, 10 minutes on the clock and then just get it done. Well, same thing, right? Treat the workout for what it is Again, if you're not efficient in certain movements, then don't do it. Again, who are you trying to prove yourself to? You know, because again, like Miranda said, are you just trying to look cool for Instagram for the 15, 20 seconds that you probably did a couple good reps? Or are you actually really good at these movements and you can get a good workout in with them, right? Um, you know, again, you have to know your limits um, before you continue to always be, yeah, hurrah, you know, hurrah, glory days, you know? Um, just work out with purpose. Yeah, so he kind of, we've talked about it a few times, but working on your weaknesses. And when I wrote this one down on the list, I kind of had in mind um, a few different areas that you could do this. Jeb mentioned it with, he feels like his weakness is strength. So maybe he's working on that specific weakness by choosing one of the accessory or extra programs. But also there's a lot of skill-based stuff that you can add in as practice in like your warm-up 
or post-workout, you could be practicing your double unders, or maybe you're just like a really good at double unders, so you buy one of the little heavier ropes, or you want to practice and work on triple unders just for the heck of it because it's a new challenge for you. Or maybe um, you wanna work on holding a handstand, not because we're ever gonna ask you to do that in a workout, but just because it's a skill that you don't have and that it sounds fun for you. And it's also a great way to warm up your shoulders and your upper body. Um, you can work on some of these glory days things in EMOMs like uh, Julian was talking about. Or if you notice that you struggle on certain movements, like we've got the push-up programs and we've got uh, different pull-up programs and toes to bar efficiency and all of this stuff where it's not, they're not necessarily fully fleshed out workouts that you're gonna add in. They're usually pretty short sessions of just practicing. I'm pretty bad at practicing stuff uh, as of late. I would definitely admit that, but I do know that there's huge value in it. Do you guys find time now, or if it's not right now, how have you in the past added in skill work like that? Um, yeah, I don't do it so much now. I, I don't practice that often, but like Julian said, when I was practicing, EMOMs were by far my favorite um, because it allowed me to get some work and then rest so that my heart rate stayed, relati stayed relatively low um, and that allowed me to really put some like concentrated effort into my movement instead of like what you normally see in a daily workout or, you know, um, is just high intensity things start to like fall away. Um, so EMOMs I find are really great for practicing movements. Awesome. Jeb, do you practice much? Nope. Um, <laughs> I really, I really don't. I, I want to just go in, get my fitness in, you know, uh, if I'm working out with this guy, you know, then maybe I'll get into some of the glory days stuff or go a little bit heavier whatever you know we'll just get a little crazy with it but in terms of like specific skills these days no not really um but when i was when i have in the past to echo what um alex was saying emoms are great intervals are timed you you have the work you know what you're gonna do and uh and then you just do it and i also would just set a clock because for me personally a lot of skill work to really master a skill you've got to break it up into small pieces and those pieces are often very boring and you just have to do a lot of them and so skill work is never something that was super exciting to me so if i set a clock for 10 minutes or even five minutes and just worked on one or two things for that time i knew that it was going to be over at a certain time i would get it in and it's really all about just getting the reps in consistently so i think small amounts of time over time is really the way to go. I want to use Nicole on his example. The other day, um, Nicole wanted to work on her double unders, you know, and there, was it the workout that was we were concerned about? I was like, look, I, oh, that's what it was actually. There was double unders in a workout, and I said, look, I don't think you should do it because honestly, you're not good at them. Um, I think you should do the hopovers, and maybe if you want to kind of get that um, double under you know, eagerness out of your system, do a five minute EMOM before the workout and just do, what I said, 20? Yeah, 20 a minute. I said 20 a minute for five minutes and see how consistent you can maintain that. And sure enough, she did a great minute one, two, three, and then minute four, I think there was like a slip up. Yeah, not so great minute four. And then minute five, it was just, it, I mean, it was bad. It was like, thank goodness we didn't choose to do it in the workout. But then we ended up saying, hey, you know what? Your frustration kicked in. But I think that time window when you're first developing a skill, you know, because you need fatigue to set in, you need that volume to work, you know, to work on a skill. So your body just gets adjusted to it. Once you've learned to master and stay calm and you're like, okay, I'm ready to level up, then go the route of maybe adding a 10 minute imam and doing one minute of a cardio piece. So uh, whether it be uh, a 15 cal bike or a 200 meter run or a uh, 15 cal row, and then the other minute do the same amount of reps without skill for work, because now you're starting to test what it would feel like in an actual workout. And if you're ready to do that and no, it's not long, it's 10 minutes. That's how you work on plugging in a skillful movement into an actual workout with confidence and not let that frustration kick in, which I'm glad we did that with Nicole because not only did she get her itch of double unders out of the way before the workout, and then she was actually able to get a good workout in, you know, and then now she knows what to work on. Oh, I, I get kind of flustered four minutes in and then 
then I really lose it, you know, five minutes in. But then again, it's about composing yourself, focusing on what you, the movement actually is, how your body is moving in that movement. It's you need to focus on what you're doing during that skill session, right? Um, before you can kind of test your limits in, you know, adding a, a, an aerobic element to it, how we do in street parking workouts. Yeah, and there's so many ways that you could add in just like little short things. I know like in a lot of the gymnastics workouts in our gymnastics accessory workouts, there's oftentimes for put seven minutes on the clock and practice holding a handstand for you that might be against the wall or it might be freestanding or it might be just practice kicking up into a handstand depending on where you're at. Um, some things that I used to do in the past to improve my grip strength is every day just once i would hang from the bar for as long as possible it didn't last that long you do it at the end of the workout when you're already fatigued like julian's saying and it's just small little things that you can add in that don't have to take up a ton of time um maybe nicole should be doing double unders in her warm-up every single day maybe she does three sets of max reps every day as part of her warm-up and as those sets get bigger and bigger then she can start adding them into the workout so don't think that it needs to be something that's on the program in the workout and that needs to take longer than just adding it into part of your warm up or something that you do really quickly post workout every every day to work on those skill based weaknesses um another weakness because for us we've been talking about mostly like workout stuff but i think where this group of individuals who's like i need a more of a challenge they're not gonna like this one what are your weaknesses outside of the workouts? Let's, you want to, if you want to level up, if you want to improve your fitness, if you want to really improve, let's take an assessment of how your sleep is. Let's take an assessment of how much you're um, putting into your mobility and your maintenance. Um, let's take an assessment of what your mindset is like going into the workouts and what you're thinking about during the workouts. And are there ways that you can challenge yourself that don't actually have anything to do with adding weight or adding anything in um, or doing anything so much within the workouts physically but are there areas that you're slacking and you're hoping to make up some ground by adding to the workouts? And I know Jeb probably has a lot to say about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we're saying here is that by leveling up, we're not talking about scaling up necessarily. We're talking about increasing, like making your fitness more broad, more robust. And if you're going to do that, the first thing that you have to do is pay attention. You have to pay attention to what you're doing right now. Um, a lot of times people like to target certain muscle groups or certain body parts or whatever um, and think that that's going to be the answer. And I think that just by, by taking your mental focus and bringing it to what you're doing right now while you're doing it, can provide you with a lot of insight as far as not just what you think you should do, but also why you should be doing it. And so I think that like, for example, the glory days, we want it, everybody wants to be able to do a muscle up, you know, they want to be able to do a muscle up. Well, why? Because being able to do a muscle up doesn't necessarily mean that you're more fit, that you have a, a better capacity to do work than somebody else. It's so that you can do a muscle up a lot of times. So you can do a muscle up and other people are like, whoa, cool, they can do a muscle up. You know, um, so I think that just paying attention to what it is that you're doing, uh, fitness workout wise and outside of that in terms of sleep, stress, nutrition, time schedule um and and how that affects your stress and all that is is huge and once you have a better understanding and you're really paying attention to to the what and the why that will help inform kind of the how and the when yeah so exactly and i think a lot of people who want I want to go heavier. I want to wear a weight vest or how do I add in this or that? If you're, if you ask, and this is a totally a generalization, but if you ask those people, when was the last time you like 
tried to improve your sleep routine or when was the last time you tried to improve your nutrition, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. I think a lot of times uh, in fitness, people believe that more physical activity is going to get them where they need to be. Um, and oftentimes those are not the people where if you tell them, hey, you know what actually might help you and is going to be much more of a mental and physical challenge is to actually slow down, like do less and spend that extra 10, 15 minutes that you are trying to add in more stuff and go stretch or meditate. And they're going to be like, that sounds terrible. And if that's you, then you're probably the person that could benefit from that more than adding in 10 or 15 more minutes of fitness. So that's a, that's a challenge that I would like to give to this group if you have joined us in looking for ways to challenge yourself. If that sounds like something that just kind of sounds hard, then you should definitely be uh, looking to do some of that. Um, the last two that I put on here are, are a little bit more nutrition based um, because I think that we do have members, again, within our community or people that are just listening or watching this um, who have consistency in making good food choices. And in general, they don't go off the rails for days or weeks at a time. And, you know, sometimes they have a birthday cake meal or they have pizza with their family, but it doesn't send them on this down hill spiral where they're starting over or where they feel like they've kind of fallen off track in general they're pretty consistent and they're doing well what are some ways that somebody like that can level up and i think you know there's nothing wrong with restricting yourself a little bit more uh when it comes to your food i feel like there is a little bit of a weird message around this right now on social media like you should never restrict your food and you should never want to lose weight and you should never take out whole food groups and i don't agree with that i think that there are um things that can be learned from i mean jeb's tested every single diet on planet earth and so he knows what works for him because he's done everything and uh while i haven't done as many things i i know that I've been able to find what works for me and what's sustainable for me because I've tried so many different things and I learn how my body responds to uh, different approaches. So one of the things that you can do if you're pretty good at making good food choices and maybe you use like an eyeball method or like a palm method of portion control and you're happy with the results that you have and maybe you're happy with your body composition but you wanna challenge yourself a little bit for, not forever, um, but for a while, is go back to, or if you've never done it in the first place, actually weighing and measuring your food to know exactly how much you're eating. And we obviously provide the templates with some suggestions for that, but I think there's so much that can be learned from that and to challenge yourself to stick to something for a while to see how your body responds to it. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I was just actually wondering if there's any questions um that we could help answer from the uh, i had audience. one more nutrition thing though oh sure okay yeah okay yeah. i was just seeing if any of you guys had anything to say no, about uh, no. weighing and measuring because i know none of us real i mean i don't think any of us are actively doing that right now mm -hmm. but you definitely can can go back to that if it's something that you've done in the past and relearn from it see how close your eyeball method has been and just kind of like redial it in um and that's not to say that you have to stick with it for very long. Maybe it's only a week that you do it for, um, but just to kind of see how, where you're at. I think it's, it can be a really cool tool, especially if you've never done it before. It's really eye-opening. And I think that everybody should at some point in their life actually weigh and measure every single piece of food or drink that goes into their mouth to see, to just really build an awareness. I think people just aren't aware of like the little things that creep in or write down every single thing. The last thing that I'll say that you can do to level up with your nutrition is something that we're doing right now. Because again, me personally right now, I don't have, I'm not trying to lose weight. We make good food choices in general. Uh, so I don't have any really big goals as far as nutrition goes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay, I would say, with my performance uh, for the most part. But there are definitely, we, we found ourselves eating a lot of uh, tortilla chips. And people will be like, well, I don't understand. Like if you're happy with your weight and you're not trying to lose weight and you're not trying to change your performance, then why does that matter? Cause I know tortilla chips aren't good for me. Like we were eating them while we were putting our meals together, like three, four handfuls, and then adding like a handful to our meal. And regardless of whether it's not making me gain weight or whatever, like 
starting to let that become such a normal thing is not something that I want. I don't want that many tortilla chips to be a part of my normal eating habits. So we got rid of them completely. And I don't think that we'll keep them out forever, but it's a challenge for us that we're doing for the Jacked by June challenge to, hey, like let's reset with this whole tortilla chip situation so that this doesn't become just a bad habit that is not something that we want in our lives. Do you guys ever do stuff like that where it's not like, hey, I'm not gonna do this forever, but I'm gonna take X out completely for a certain amount of time? Go for it, Alex. <laughs> um, no, I was just thinking there's, we. Josh buys these, my husband buys these um, little packs of dark chocolate covered almonds, which is great. I love that they're in a little packs because it's kind of like the serving sizes are already already like determined for me um and i'll have like uh, for a while i would have like one a day and it's the same thing it's just a slippery slope like i don't know that it's <laughs> completely derailing my performance or even my health um but it, it's opening a door that maybe i don't want to be you know blown wide open at some point so uh that's what i decided once you said you were getting rid of tortilla chips for jack by june i was like that's what i'm gonna do yeah yeah, so I, the two things that come to mind for me are cheese and ice cream. And those will, they just creep in there, you know? Like, I am somebody that can very easily just, after dinner, before I go to bed, like, pull out the thing of ice cream and have, like, a couple of spoon fills and then put it back. And it's no big deal. But then it's like, when I'm doing that every day, and then on the weekends, I actually have a bowl of ice cream or when I have cheese and I have like our Friday night involves cheese and like um, usually our Sunday morning involves cheese. But then I'm making our breakfast on Saturday morning and I'll throw a little cheese in there. Or maybe, you know, it just finds its way in there. Um, so I think that Carolina and I actually both really enjoy doing our own little 30 day challenges. And so we've done everything from like we're going to wake up every day for um at this amount of at this time or we're gonna not gossip for 30 days um but then also taking one little ingredient that we know has gotten a little bit out of control and um and just saying like hey we're not gonna mess with this for 30 days it's it's great and it's funny because you go through this little withdrawal period at the beginning and then by 30 days you feel pretty good and then you know sometimes that stuff creeps back in no big deal you just, you know, you identify it, you pay attention and uh, do another 30 days if you need to. Yeah. And I think I, it's not even about I, the the weird message that I see a lot of times on social media is about that. We're like saying that tortilla chips are bad or cheese is bad or the chocolate covered almonds are bad. And that's not it at all. I personally like to feel like I control what I want to eat. The food doesn't control me. Like, I don't need you tortilla chips. Like, I'll have you if I want you, but I don't need you. And I think um, people get into that place where it's like, you can't, and we see this with members, like, you can't take away my peanut butter. Like, I, I, I have to have it. And that's not a good place to be in. Even if you can't take away my peanut butter is you can't take away my broccoli. I need it. Like, no, you don't need broccoli. Like, you can switch it out for Brussels sprouts. And like, nothing should have that big of a hold on you that you couldn't take it out for 30 days or something like that. So cycling through some of those, um, I think is a really good lesson in just you being in control at that point. All right, now it's time for questions. All right, so we've got a good question here. Should we always be hitting the extra challenge on our strong movements or should we hit the weak movements as well for growth? Yeah, so her question uh, was, I'll have to kind of clarify that. So it depends. Um, we all have movements that we're better at or that we can use more weight with certain movements and not with others. For me, like I can add weight to a power clean or a squat. Uh, if it comes to like a strict press or something like that, I'm gonna struggle with the extra challenge weight a little bit more. Uh, I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer for like that necessarily, especially if you're able to hit the goal times. Yeah, maybe when you add extra challenge in with power cleans, you're on the faster end of the goal times. And when you add it in with push press, you're still in the goal time, but like kind of almost like riding the edge of not being on there or maybe just a little bit over. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, play around with it and, and kind of see what you don't want to do is 
only go extra challenge when it's something that you're comfortable with. Like definitely go, ex if you're going extra challenge on some stuff, try going extra challenge on something that, like if you're always going extra challenge when it's heavier weight and you're never going extra challenge when it's more burpees, like that's a pattern that you're gonna wanna break because <laughs> you're not going to uh, improve in, in your weak areas, which is kind of the whole point, right? Yeah, I feel you there. I would uh, definitely be the one to add more weight and not more burpees. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, you had a podcast today, Uncomfortable on Purpose, that I think is a great little supplemental listen on that one. So earlier you guys talked about new equipment. For money purposes, if you could recommend a piece of equipment that could maybe change the game for someone but not cost too much, what new piece of equipment would you maybe work into your day? I'll let one of you guys answer that one. I mean, uh, most cost efficient, you're going to probably go with the sandbag because when you're buying a pair of dumbbells, you're buying, it's, let's just say, uh, for, I'm using male as an example here, you're going to go 40 pound dumbbells, usually what we prescribe there. So now you're getting a pair of dumbbells, so that's 80 pounds. Usually you're going to have to multiply that by, especially with the cost as the way it's inflated now. So you're looking at about $2 a pound probably for the good one. So you're looking at 160 bucks plus tax, depending on your area, or as opposed to a sandbag, a lot of the sandbags, you're looking at hundred dollars for the 50 pound, 25 to 50 pound bag. And then you go buy the sand separately or, um, rubber mulch or pea gravel. Um, and you're looking at around 130, 150 range. So you, it depends on the weights, but yeah, usually you're going to go sandbag dumbbells, uh, and then, or kettlebells and then barbells is going to be the, the last one for sure. Kind of a, um, a hack, if you will, because we used to have to do this back when we were competing in CrossFit and they asked for like a specific weight for something and we didn't have it. Um, now we're not responsible if your taping job is really bad, but I have seen people that instead, like they're, they want to go from 40 pound dumbbells to 45s, but buying 45s when eventually, hopefully you're trying to get to the fifties, you're like, ah, oh, this is starting to get expensive. I I've seen it done where people just buy five pound plates and they very securely with lots and lots of duct tape, duct tape the fives, a pair of five pound plates is going to be, or two and a half, I guess you would do on each end, is going to be much cheaper than buying the 45s. <laughs> Again, not responsible for your tape job, but I know home gym people are very resourceful. That could be something that you could try to save money. You guys talked about working on your weaknesses. What would each one of you say is a weakness you would like to work on? That we would like to work on or that we should work on? <laughs> Let's go with should work on. Alex? The assault bike. I mean, it's pretty much anytime it comes up in a, or like if I choose to do it in a workout, it just destroys me. So yeah, I probably should work on that. You know what's fun is when you used to be a lot fitter than you are now, everything feels like a weakness because you know what you've done in the past. So, I mean, my list could be very, very long. Um, we've recently discovered that our rowing isn't what it used to be. Mm. And we've um, been adding in some more rowing since Project April has been over. Uh, I will be forever not the best runner. So making sure that I keep that in, um, maybe not, I'm probably not gonna go so far as to do the 5K program, but making sure that I do running in the workouts at least, you know, a couple times a month or once a week is good for me. And then I really enjoyed doing the uh, programming, the body weight strength stuff, because even though that is something that I enjoy, I, I definitely know I wasn't as strong in it as I used to be. So that was, that was really fun. Uh, for me, I would say that if I don't run often, like, so during winter time, I would, I focus more on using the assault bike. Uh, it still gives me a really, really good workout. Um, and I neglect running a bit. So I got to make sure that I kind of keep up with my running. Uh, just because I am on the heavier side when it comes to uh, just, you know, being a person and running in general. Um, a lot of lean muscle mass, so I just need to make sure that I'm constantly working on staying aerobically fit. That's the way I like to say it. Um, also, I, I would love to, if I had the ability to swim mm. and it was like super easy access, like, cool, you have a swimming pool in your backyard. I would actually plug in swimming a lot more into my workouts just in just because I'm, I mean, I am so bad at it. I, I, I swam Same. the wrong way in the ocean in 2015 CrossFit games. It was not good. 
I was um, like the team member, like riding on the raft because everybody else could swim and I couldn't. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason <laughs> why um, you know we don't see much people of color in the swimming pool. We, we're not the greatest, you know. Um, and I would also say that you know pull-ups, just a little bit more on the heavier side as well. So I think your pull-ups are probably fine. No, like strict pull-ups. <laughs> I'm just you know I got to work on volume. Uh, I don't really feel like I need to work on anything. Uh, <laughs> you just, just said you needed to get stronger. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, swimming is great. I didn't think of that, but I would love to be a better swimmer. I never do it, and I don't really like water. And, uh, yeah, I feel very uncomfortable and out of breath anytime I'm in it. Um, but what came to me, like, I'm actually fairly happy with how strong I am, but I know that relative to other fitness domains, it probably is deficient. But... I feel like um, actually only technique is something that has slipped with me. And I notice when I demo a lot of like only movements, it just, it doesn't come as, it's not as fluid as it once was. So I think in terms of a skill that I feel like I would want or should develop, it would be, it would be only technique. I really don't care about how much um, I could snatch or clean and jerk, but I just want it to feel as smooth as it once did. Awesome. What is the best way to level up to getting to the prescribed weights within the goal times? Like a strength accessory or what would you recommend to increase the weight? My guess for most people is it's not your old, it's not your overall strength capabilities that are not allowing you to get in the goal times with the um extra challenge weight for in most cases in most cases if you were completely um not under fatigue that weight would feel totally fine for most people and they could do bigger sets and things like that it's um stamina with that kind of weight and the only way to do that is to do kind of the some of the stuff that we were talking about before is maybe you don't use that weight for the whole workout uh maybe you baby step it so instead of going from 25 to 35 you go with 30s first kind of go in between um because usually the jump with dumbbells anyway is the 25 is usually like the listed weight and then the 35 is the extra challenge uh, that's a big jump and i mean even for me that's gonna off sometimes double my score and so uh the 30s are kind of that middle ground so that's one option the other option is maybe all you have are the 25s and 35s so for the first two rounds you use the 35s and then you go back to uh the 25s and play around with it um, make sure that you're doing big sets and that you're crushing the 25s because I think a lot of times people think that it's just getting stronger, but oftentimes it's because they're out of breath that they're not hitting the goal times. It's that they're taking super long breaks, not that they're failing reps because it's so heavy. So be careful of thinking that it's just a strength thing and that you need to add in power or, or something like that. Um, and then if, it, if it's not that, if you're like, no, my breathing's totally fine, I'm literally failing reps with this weight, then yeah, looking into SOGO or you know some of the power workouts or things like that are, are a great option. So it depends on the person for that. And the last question, say you had bad knees or something that you aren't rehabbing perhaps, but just a body part that isn't as well off as the others. <laughs> How would someone level up working around that? Well, maybe they won't like this answer um, because what I'm working on right now is is not identifying with having bad body parts. Um, I know that there are some exceptions, but I have for many years said I had bad knees. And until I decided, no, my knees aren't bad, I just don't work on them enough, um, and actually started leveling up in areas outside of fitness, as in maintenance. Um, I found that my knees really aren't all that bad, or at least they can be better than they are now. So maybe they're not, you know, optimal or ideal, but that doesn't mean that that, that I can't improve in some way. Um, so, and again, maybe that's not the answer they're looking for. Um, I don't know. I mean, if it's one limb, then that means, you know, if it's, it, let's say it's a lower body limb, it's a bad knee. There are many, many opportunities to level up with upper body movements um, 
or to just improve your, like Miranda was saying, the weight that you can use with that bad body part or the stamina that you can put out with that bad body part. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have. It's, that's where I am as far as working around stuff. And actually, like when you're injured, it's, uh, or if you have something that's it's just going to be kind of like a forever thing. Um, It's such an opportunity for you to, the reason that I'm so fast at air squats is because for a while, um, back in 2012, that's pretty much all that I could do. And so I had an opportunity, think of it as an opportunity to get really, really, really good at something that you never normally would have spent that much time working on because you weren't forced to and, and go for it. So maybe, yeah, your legs in a cast and you do the push-up program two times through and you do a bunch of strict pull-ups and things like that and now you're just this like pull-up push-up ninja which you never would have become if you didn't ever go through that issue that you're having with your uh leg and then the other thing that i'll say is because i have kind of a, a wonky shoulder and i think you have to evaluate how you're measuring the v- the value of your workout. So for example, I don't do butterfly pull-ups. I can do butterfly pull-ups, but I don't because they really hurt my shoulder. And I do let it get to me sometimes because anybody who's doing butterfly pull-ups in the workout with me, like if I'm doing a workout with any of these guys, uh, Molly, I will be slower than them. And it bums me out big time because I'll be like, oh, they were faster than me because I was doing regular kip or maybe I was doing strict pull-ups. But did I really get a less like ideal workout? No, kipping pull-ups just take a little bit longer. Strict pull-ups are a little bit of a different stimulus, but I'm over here as an almost 39-year-old woman doing strict pull-ups in a workout. Like, is it, I'm valuing my workout based on how, what I did compared to them or what I did compared to what I used to do, not compared to what, what I'm actually doing and how I'm improving with the stuff that doesn't mess up my shoulder and me not sleeping on a shoulder that hurts afterwards is much more valuable than keeping up with Julian in a workout, if that makes sense. So be careful of how you're valuing it. Also, just as, and I can't remember if you said if it was somebody that had had an injury or maybe not necessarily had an injury, right? And my knees have never been injured per se, but they are in a lot of pain a lot of the time if I'm not very diligent with some of the maintenance that I do. Um, If you've got just like weird joints with some pain in them and that kind of thing, static holds, and really slow movement through a range of motion is going to do a lot to lubricate that joint and actually strengthen all of the muscles around it to create more support so that you can actually use it the way that you want to use it in a workout. And we've got three really good ways that you could do that. And you just have to be consistent with it. Street parking maintenance, obviously. Um, And then the body weight strength and the dumbbell strength programs, both would be really, really good for improving your joint health. Awesome. And uh, that's it. I hope this episode was helpful for any of you guys that feel like you're up for an extra challenge. Maybe it's summertime and you're feeling a little bit more motivated. You've got some extra time on your hands. Um, Know that this is not a forever thing. So just because you have extra time for the next few months doesn't mean that if you do accessories for the next few months and then you have to go back um, to just doing the main workout that you're going to like lose everything and that now that i've entered this level i have to stay there like that's not how fitness works there's ebbs and flows and there's times where you have more time less time more motivated less motivated deployed home like all of those things Um, but when you find yourself in a situation where you want to challenge yourself a bit hopefully these will give you some tips on how to do that we'll see you next time (laughs) i thought julian was going to jump in yeah, you gotta like and subscribe and oh, all yeah, that. Yeah, tell them. There you go. <laughs> don't forget to don't forget to smash <laughs> that like and subscribe button. <laughs> that was not smooth. Don't forget to like and subscribe again. Yeah.